Hello and welcome to Strange Stories. It's great to have you here. We are all about sharing stories of near-death experiences from around the world in the hopes of bringing some light and inspiration to your day. Our daily videos offer a glimpse into what lies beyond this life, and we believe that they can help us all appreciate the gift of life a little bit more. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue to grow. And to our returning viewers, welcome back. We're thrilled to have you with us again. So go ahead, grab a cozy blanket, get comfy, and join us for today's incredible near-death experience story. Story number one. It was a warm, sunny Sunday afternoon during the long Labor Day weekend of 1977. My friend and co-worker drove me to a barbecue at a friend's house. We were driving through an intersection. A sports car sped through the intersection and slammed into the side of us. As we skidded towards the curb, I heard a crunch of metal and a huge jolt. Then everything came to a halt and I recall watching the windscreen shatter in slow motion. It appeared to be frost forming on glass. I peered out the passenger window, watching as the concrete light pole approached. I knew I wasn't going to make it out of there alive. Everything came to a halt as that thought crossed my mind. There was no sound, no movement, and everything appeared to be suspended in midair. I felt a presence surrounding me, followed by a swooshing sound, as if helicopter blades were very close. I was suddenly moving up at a breakneck pace. I felt as if I were being gently embraced, as if someone or something was holding me, and I knew I would be fine. We accelerated as the sound became louder. All I could see or sense was bright white light, which I could look at. It was surreal. I remember looking up and seeing white, then looking down and seeing the accident scene. I had a strong sense of peace and calm. Everything would be fine. I knew. We arrived at the end of a long cobblestone path. A large city to the left and a beautiful field to the right were visible ahead. Along the way, a babbling stream ran. The city was made of luminescent glass and the buildings glistened in vibrant colors I'd never seen before. In the meadow, I saw children, adults, cats, dogs, birds, butterflies, Lots of butterflies and every kind of animal playing and singing. I wanted to join them right away. It was only then that I was able to see my guide, for lack of a better word. He was about 30 or 35 years old and very attractive. I recognized him right away because he was dressed in a brown or beige robe. He smiled and said telepathically, Come on, follow me. I was led to one of the structures. The buildings grew taller and taller as we approached until they vanished into the clouds. We entered what appeared to be a library of sorts, with multiple levels made of marble and dark wood. From top to bottom, all I could see were scrolls. Most were rolled, while others were cloth, raspy paper, or flat and etched in marble. It was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. There were a lot of people there, bustling around. They all looked at me as if they were relieved to see me. Some even applauded. Then I was led to a room that looked like a conservatory. The walls came to life as soon as I was left alone. 360 degrees of movies were projected at the same time. I saw the domino effect of harsh and unkind words and actions on people. How it would start with one person and spread to 300. I felt everyone's rage and sadness. I thought I was going to burst. I was completely shaken emotionally. That was the only semi-negative experience I had during my visit. I was told to return to the library to begin my studies, as in reading the scrolls. It was more like downloading into my consciousness. I spent 60 years reading and studying there. Most were people's lives from start to finish. Most people allowed me to feel their emotions. Some were lively, while others were a little dull. Much of what was downloaded was data. This will be difficult to explain, but I will do my best. We have a role to play here on Earth. We make our own lives, and all of our lives are necessary for our evolution and development. That is how memory works. We learn and grow as a result of our different lifestyles, beliefs, opinions, and so on. 
Sorry to say, but even the most evil, death, destruction and disease is necessary. Consider this. If everything was always good and going your way, if all relationships were good and everyone got what they wanted, life would be pretty boring and stagnant over time. I know it sounds wonderful, but would it really allow us to grow? Another difficult concept to grasp is that there's no such thing as time. Your life is happening all at once, which means that your past, present, and future are all in the same bubble. This so-called linear time is created by our brain. I know, weird. This may raise concerns about free will. Remember that things can change on a dime. I knew everything there was to know about the universe. But why, how, or what was the point of it all? I was there for so long that it was difficult not to know everything. When I returned, I couldn't recall much of what I'd learned. I assumed it was done on purpose. I'll never forget being told I had to return. I was taken aback. I wished to remain. I was arguing. I didn't come out on top. But I made a deal with myself that if I did return, I would stay. But I guess I'd said that before, a lot of times. So I had to squeeze my large frame back into that tiny body, which was now halfway outside that wrecked car. I couldn't seem to fit in. It took me six months to feel at ease. I arrived in an ambulance. The EMT expressed his delight at seeing me. My driving friend was hospitalized for three months due to a broken pelvis, arm, femur, and crushed foot. I escaped with no injuries. The insurance adjuster was surprised I made it out alive, let alone with nothing broken. Think about it. So you now understand that time is irrelevant. 60 years in heaven, or 30 minutes on earth. So that about sums up my experience. There was a lot more that happened there, but this is long enough. Footnote. I decided to share this after nearly 40 years due to an unusual series of events that occurred to me recently. The most important was that I discovered who my guide was. He stayed with me the entire time I was there. I returned to my small hometown after retiring and happened to walk by a church. When I looked towards it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. My guide was a friend and classmate who died when he was 12 years old. It had to be him, without a doubt. I was certain I recognized him. Story number two. I'm writing this with great relief because I've been wanting to tell someone about what happened to me for years. I've been thinking about it every day, and when I've tried to tell someone about it, they don't seem to understand or relate to me. I had always wondered what had happened to me because I'd never heard of such an experience until I came across your website and discovered the term NDE. I finally realized I'm not alone. The experience was not as long or as wonderful as some others, but it was real and significant to me. I had woken up in the high dependency unit after a four-hour operation on my hip and pelvis and was told I was doing well. I was in excruciating pain and could hardly move. I couldn't talk because my esophagus had been scratched and I had a sore throat. After a while, and after I had begun to recover, I began to feel quite ill and I tried to get the nurse's attention by banging on the bed. The next thing I remember is hearing the machines to which I was attached sounding alarms, a nurse shouting something and a man responding. I appeared to be somewhere else the next moment. What I must emphasize is that I had fainted many times before, had many operations, and had never, ever felt like this before. I found myself in a completely black space. It was total darkness like I'd never seen before, but I wasn't scared. I recall looking to my left and thinking to myself, This is fine. I'm fine. I'm not in any pain. I'm in good spirits. I was completely relaxed. This is difficult to explain, but I didn't believe I died. But I did think, if this is it, I don't mind. Which is terrible because I have a loving family and children who rely on me, and I would never abandon them. I remember looking down and not seeing my body, even though I thought I was still lying down. And as I looked around, I noticed a woman standing to my right. She was a bright white light with wavy hair who smiled warmly at me. She appeared to be saying, Kim, it's okay. Come back. 
I say come rather than go, which I don't understand, but I'm certain she said. I know I didn't have time to react because I was jolted awake on the bed. It happened so quickly that I was taken aback. The pain returned immediately, but I looked around for the lady I'd seen, but no one resembled her. I was now surrounded by many people. They had to have been there at some point because there was so much equipment around that it only felt like moments. The doctor stated that my heart had stopped for a short time, but he did not elaborate and he did not state that I had died. I wouldn't have realized what had happened to me had been so serious if I hadn't seen this being. I'd been wondering what had happened for years. Was I hearing a nurse? Was I seeing a nurse but not seeing anyone else? Whatever it was, it was a positive experience that I will never forget. I've always imagined that if something bad happened, I'd see a loved one I'd lost. This did not occur, and I was perplexed. Until now, finding reports of other people seeing this being or something similar has made me feel validated. I knew something had happened, but I didn't know what. What distinguishes me from others is that, until recently, my memory was extremely clear. Others discover that they never forget their experience and that it stays with them for years after the event. That was true for me until recently, but it is now becoming more difficult for me to recall. I believe this is because I'm going through a difficult time as my dear mother is dying of cancer and the more I rely on my experience for comfort, the more it seems to fade from me. It is beneficial to write this to you 